you know, you can see that is clearly a total disregard for another human being's life. Um, what did she think was going to happen? Or maybe she didn't think at all. But uh, 12 hours in that suitcase, um, he's probably all like doubled over uh, and can't even, uh, he can't, his diaphragm can't even expand that much. That's really the horror of this thing. What she was doing was letting him know she's boss. Pretty yeah. much. Damn yell from the chat. Mm -hmm. That whole men's ray thing at Professor Geary. Well, people are learning stuff from you, Mike, uh, right. from the professor right. here. Thank you. Melissa, Good. she has no soul, and she laughs. She will get what she deserves. <clears throat> yeah, I would think that uh, hearing her uh, confession, hearing her interview with white detectives is going to really uh, hurt her a lot. I'm going to show some of her testimony in court just the other day. Any further witnesses, evidence, or testimony, sir? I'd like to call Sarah Boone. Sarah Boone, the woman accused of zipping her boyfriend up in a suitcase and filming him as he struggled for air, says her interview with police should be thrown out. She testified in court this week that her rights were violated and that she didn't understand what was going on inside that interrogation room. You got everything you need to know from the Florida defendant's most recent court hearing. Welcome to Sidebar, presented by Law and Crime. I'm Elizabeth Milner, in for Jesse Webber. The case against 46-year-old Sarah Boone is finally getting closer to a trial in Orlando, Florida. Boone was arrested in February of 2020 when her boyfriend, George Torres, was found dead inside a small suitcase in their apartment. Boone claimed they had been drinking and playing hide-and-seek when Torres got into the suitcase. She claimed she forgot he was in there and fell asleep. She got up hours later. Torres was dead. But Boone's story that it was all a terrible accident was questioned when detectives found videos on her phone of her taunting Torres while he was in the suitcase. Sarah. For everything you've done to me. Sarah. For everything you've done to me. Sarah. Thank you. Jury selection is expected to begin in the case next week, so the attorneys have been hammering out last-minute motions with the judge, including wanting to throw out an interview Boone did with police after Torres was found dead, as well as a motion to allow Boone to wear makeup and civilian clothes during trial. So let's take you back to February of 2020. When the investigation first started, Orlando detectives spoke with Boone at the scene in their police car, and she agreed they could take her phone. She claims when she contacted them to get her phone back the next day, they tricked her into coming to the station for an interview where her attorney argues she wasn't properly Mirandized. You know, Mike, uh, one of the mm. things is that, yeah. uh, first of all, Kat in the chat, thank you so much for the 1999 super sticker. Very much appreciated. But the, the police tricked her into coming in by saying, oh, you want your phone back? You got to come in uh, and we'll give you your phone. Unbeknownst to many people in the public, the police are allowed to trick you. It's called a ruse, commonly known in the criminal justice field. If they know that they want to interview you and they know that you don't want to get interviewed, they can trick you into coming in the way they did in this case. And a defense attorney can argue that my client was tricked and the judge could say, yes, case law says the police are allowed to do that. <clears throat> you want to speak upon that, Mike? Yeah, um, the uh, Supreme Court is, is uh, ruled on this and all the courts in every state has ruled on this because everyone's tried this. Every defense attorney has tried this. So long as the police obey the law when it comes to the Fourth Amendment, the Fifth Amendment, the Sixth Amendment, Miranda, search and seizure, things like that, um, they can say things to you uh, and suggest things to you that may be untrue to order to see how you react. So she could, they may want to talk to her but they don't want to drop off her phone and stop off at her house because she they you know she they would need permission to come into her house and she could deny it and then they won't even get a chance to talk to her. So you say, come on, come on down to station house. We'll give you a phone back. Um, okay, come on down. Oh, by the way, could you just do us a favor? Just want to ask you a few questions. That's all. No problem whatsoever. We you know we see this. We uh, we saw it with in the Soto case. That's the way it goes. They're not violating any sort of constitutional right. They can always say and suggest things that may be untrue just to see how you react. There's not, you know, that is uh, 
well-defined case law. A lot of defense attorneys will always raise that. They'll always, you know, pound on the table. You know, my client has been tricked, but that that is not the case when it comes to, uh, you know, uh, judges in, in any state in the union. That's something that is clearly allowable under the Constitution. You know, Mike, when I was a sergeant in Manhattan North Homicide Squad, when we would have an important witness or perpetrator to interview, many times they would say, interview me right here. And we'd say, no, 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 that's not how we do things. And basically, I used to compare it to, if you play a sport, do you want to play on your own home court or you want to play, you want to be a visitor? No, you want to be on your home court. And the other thing is, in interviewing uh, either witnesses or defendants or per potential perpetrators, you also need computer work to be able to do as you're testing their veracity or testing what they're saying is true or false. Because if you ask anyone that you interview, oh, have you ever been arrested before? 90% of the time they'll say, uh, no, I've never been. And then you run their name and the, the computer starts just spinning yeah. page upon page out of the criminal history. So if you relied on the person you're interviewing to tell you the truth, not just that, have you ever made a complaint report against someone in your building? And they tell you no, and then you look and you see they're a habitual complaint file. So all those are good reasons as to why you want to interview someone in your own home court, in your own precinct, in your own detective squad, not on their home turf, because that gives them the advantage. Let me go back to, to uh, this recording here. Here's some of what she had to say in that two hour interview. My intention was not to leave him in there. Please understand that. My intention was not to leave him in there. But you went upstairs thinking yeah. that he could get himself yes. out, but the video shows That's at why I told point you. And I see his fingers. And He'll be out there any minute. Like, and then 30 minutes later, he didn't show. And he's telling me. And you I he can't wake up. Do you he's think he's joking? To you told me he was laughing, and I we were before. The video, there, there's no. We laughing. first got in there. Both of us were. So how long was he in there for? Like this video is at 11:12 when it starts. So was he in there for like a long time prior to no. recording this? No. No. So it goes from funny to no longer funny. But I you're the only one laughing. But I didn't think that he was like panicky. Like I didn't. I. So pushing up on a suitcase saying, Sarah, 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 I can't breathe. I can't breathe. <laughs> George has done that in the past before, too, where it's just like he thinks that he's woe is me kind of thing, where it's like, I well, don't He's think. never been locked in a suitcase, but no, he couldn't get out. So it's kind of, I thought it was the the oxygen crawling wolf, crying wolf kind of thing. Okay. And again, my plan. But, that, but nowhere in there is he laughing, is he joking, he is begging. And you're the only one laughing. Okay. And you're the only one saying derogatory comments. Like you're mad. No. Every day we cover a lot of chilling stories, just like Sarah Boone's case on Sidebar and Law and Crime.